Hi, this is Randy from Friday's Golf, and welcome to Hard Boiled, the segment where you write in the product you want to see me review, and I give you my first opinion on it. Now, today's product is kind of a strange one. I didn't have any requests for it, I just had a general curiosity about it, which brings me to my point. I don't want Hard Boiled to become a segment where I just review clubs all the time. There's more to golf products than that. That's why I've done bags, I've done shoes, I've done golf balls, and I want to continue down that path of diversity. So if there's anything that you guys want to see reviewed, please put it in the comment section below. If I see any trends or common threads, I will definitely make a video on it. The reason I wanted to make today's episode is because of my dad. My dad is a golf ball junkie. We all have one in our lives. They're frustrating to play with. Every time they pass a creek or a pond or any kind of long grass, they're constantly walking through it trying to find golf balls. I understand that there's people out there like this. I'm not encouraging it, but today's episode is really for you guys. Now, without any further delay, let me introduce you to the Rescue Stretcher Retriever. This is a real product. According to the box, it's for specialized rescue of lost golf balls that reaches up to 35 feet. So this isn't your everyday retriever. Your everyday retriever, you pull out of your golf bag and you typically have a reach that's less than 20 feet. And it's really for golf balls that you can see. So it's on the edge of ponds or, or if you hit it down into a, a ravine, you can reach down and grab a ball with general ease. So the idea behind this retriever is you have a cage with a lasso on it that you hurl out into the abyss and you reel in golf balls. Ones that you can't see, ones that you're not supposed to reach. I admit I do have a personal interest in this product because I play a lot of golf out at my dad's house at the golf course we made out there and every single tee shot besides one we hit over water and every now and then we put one in. Not proud of it but it happens. This is kind of cool because Generally, the golf balls don't just trickle in, they find the center of the pond, so this allows us now to throw it out into the middle of the pond, hopefully, I haven't used it yet, and then reel it in and retrieve those golf balls that we would have no other way of retrieving. So let's unbox it. So uh, that's it, that's all that's in there is literally the cage, which I would say is about, I don't know, 14 inches at the top, probably 12 at the base but it's supposed to fit eight golf balls in this kind of trough section. But you can see it has two eyelids on each side there, and this, I don't know, this looks like a dog leash. Holy Okay, so I found the end that you attach to the retriever, so basically, I don't have, there's no instructions, this is pretty self-explanatory, but you have two clips here that you would clip onto either side, is that right? That feels tight. There it is. That looks nothing like the picture. Where's the picture at? There's more slack in that image. I'm not, not too happy with that picture there. All right, I have the clips attached to each side there. Uh, already I have my reservations, but I'll save those till later. Right now I want to give you a little bit more of the technical specs. Yeah, I'll have to measure it, but it seems like 35 feet. Uh, I feel like there should be like a reel on this thing. It is a dog leash. All right, so there's a little loop at the end, but it's, I don't have large hands and I can get like three fingers through there effectively. So I'm not sure how you're supposed to just maybe like just loop it with a finger like that. Theoretically, when you drag this across the bottom of the pond, it collects the golf balls in this trough area here and then voila, Pro V1s. So right away I have some reservations, one of which being this dog leash that they use to uh, attach to each side of the basket there. It, it doesn't feel very strong. I feel like if you had like a, a, a small basset hound on this thing, he could break this thing no problem. As far as for pulling in golf balls, I realize there's not a lot of uh, tensile strength needed to lift eight golf balls out of the water. But that's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried that if you throw this out into a murky pond or lake, that it may get caught on like a big rock or a tree branch that fell into that lake. And then uh, you wouldn't be able to break it free by pulling on it because you'd probably just break this strap. Another reservation that I have is right here in the center of the cage is where the weld is. That's strange to me. I don't know a lot about welding, but you'd think you'd want to put that joint where it attaches to the basket so you could weld that a little bit more effectively, make it a little bit more rigid and sturdy because if that got caught on something once again, that could be another vulnerable spot that it, it might break. So it says it holds eight golf balls. I wanna test that and make sure it actually does. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this trough up. Eight golf balls. Uh, 
eight-ish. All right, so there you have your golf ball rescue stretcher retriever. The next step is to take this out on the course and throw it into a pond to see what I can reel in. It pretty much concludes this portion of the review. The next time you see me, I'll be out on the course, and then I'll come back in to give you my final thoughts and conclusions. So uh, let's go see if we can hawk some balls. Real quickly before we go to the course, I was wrapping this tether up around the two connection points there, and on that last wrap, that little hoop at the end of the tether fits perfectly over that eyelid. I don't know if they designed it this way, but for someone who is obsessed with putting things away properly, uh, this is cool because it will fit in your golf bag and it won't get all tangled up and you don't have to worry about undoing a knot every time you want to use it. So, kind of pointless, but to me it's a big deal. I'll see you out at the course. I'm here, I'm at the golf course, it's freezing outside, but I'm testing a ball retriever for you guys. This spot right here I feel like is optimal because it's the only forced carry on the entire course. I have personally lost a lot of balls here and I just want to get them back, that's really why I'm doing this. But first order of business is I want to measure this tether and make sure it's actually 35 feet and then we will commence the testing. It's 32 feet. It's always bogus. They measure these things taking into consideration the length of your reach, which I think is garbage because then I have to explain that to the customer, but the tether is 32 feet long, not 35. <laughs> oh, I was out here setting this test up and I have two unsuspecting victims. Come on, hit it in the pond. Pond it. Oh, he just barely cleared it. This guy looks a little shaky. I think he's gonna dump it in the pond. Hope he's playing like a Kirkland. Get big money for those. Oh man, I think he made good contact too. Oh! Dang it! So close. I know, uh, the one just barely cleared the edge there. I'm actually testing out a new golf ball retriever and I was really banking on you guys putting a couple in the pond there. All right, we're ready to test it out now. Uh, first step is to put the end of the tether around a couple of fingers because if you throw it without having that attached, then you lose this. So uh, here we go, let's try it out. I'm gonna give it my uh, best Wonder Woman. Lasso of truth! Just weeds. Okay, so I learned something from that first throw. I threw it too hard and the tether actually kind of acted like a bungee cord and it snapped it back at me. So I'm gonna throw it again, this time without so much power. A little better. I drag it nice and slow. Let it kind of skim the bottom. If you pull it fast, it kind of rises up. More weeds. I'm gonna change positions. I'm gonna run over there, I'll be right back. So I'm starting to notice a pretty consistent trend. Uh, this thing's great at catching weeds, not so great at catching golf balls. I guess this was something I didn't really consider was that you have a lot of plants and vegetation on the bottom of these lakes and ponds on golf courses. So when your golf ball goes down there, it's not like sitting on just like a nice platform for this thing to scoop it up with. It actually has to compete with not only the terrain, but the growth and debris that falls into the lake or pond as well. So I'm gonna give it a couple more tries, see if I can't find something. After 20 minutes, I finally got one. Uh, I caught it in the tray and I got excited and I pulled it really fast and then it hit the wood wall there and fell back in and I had to crawl down and get it because I couldn't get it scooped up with it, but I got one. After 30 minutes of trying to rescue golf balls, I was only able to rescue one. On the other hand, I found a ton of seaweed. So uh, I will be sending Riverbend an invoice for cleaning out their pond. In all seriousness though, there is a lot of debris in this pond or lake or whatever you want to call it and it kind of impeded the ability of the retriever to get underneath the golf ball, but 
even the golf balls out in the open that I could see, I still couldn't get and just luckily happened to snag this one out. Piece of crap range ball. So I'm gonna head back to the couch now. My hands are freezing and I'll kind of sum up my experience with this retriever. I'm back on the ugly couch. I'm finally warm again and I wanna give you my closing thoughts on the rescue stretcher retriever, which is a horrible name. Just call it the rescue retriever, done. Anyway, when I got this out to the course, you could see right away that it didn't quite function like the literature on the box said it would. You throw it out into the lake or pond, you start to reel it in, and right away I noticed that there wasn't enough weight. I think you could improve the design by maybe widening it a little bit and then adding some weight to these outside bars to give you some force when you're pulling it that it actually scoops underneath the golf ball and, and lifts it into the cage. On the upside, the durability of the dog leash held up. Uh, there was a couple times I got it kind of snagged on a branch and was pulling hard on it and was able to break it free without damaging uh, the the tether itself or the clips that hold it to the cage. So I think overall this is pretty sturdy. You wouldn't have to worry about breaking it or anything like that. So in short, if you're taking this out to the golf course to make it ring golf balls, it's probably not going to be the best tool. There's a lot of times where I could see golf balls in the pond and I could easily have gotten them with any other retriever on the planet where I would throw this thing out and try to reel it over the top of the ball and it would just kind of jump over the top of it. There was a lot of times where there was no debris at all. It was very clear and still when I would pull it over the top of the ball, it wouldn't it wouldn't pick it up. What it does pick up is seaweed. So if you have a pond or lake that you live on and you have a seaweed problem, bam, this thing is your solution. You throw it out there, you get all that seaweed out. I think this would work best. I don't think it would work great, but I think it would work best in a situation like at my dad's house where he has a small pond. He treats it heavily. It's that pretty turquoise color. So it has no weeds in it. It has no leaf debris, but still it's, it's pure chance. You're throwing it out into a huge body of water, reeling it in, hoping to come across the golf ball where it just happens to <laughs> perfectly fall into this cage. And the, the chances and the odds of that are against you. Having said that, it, it was kind of fun. I, I could see doing this with my four-year-old daughter. She loves to go fishing even when we catch nothing and that reminded me of this. If you just want to throw something out into a body of water and reel it in, you can give this a shot. And plus when you get a golf ball, it's like the best feeling ever. So in conclusion, it's not a great retriever. It's not very expensive, so you're not wasting a lot of money. But as far as actually retrieving golf balls from a body of water, it's just not very effective. And I realize that some of you might get this as like a Christmas present from an aunt that knows nothing about golf, but know that it's not bad. It's just not very good at picking up golf balls out of the lake. You could always do what I do with my golf Christmas presents that I have no use for. You can package them back up and uh, give them to Scooby Steve. So, uh, Merry Christmas, Dad. Ooh, I almost forgot. A little bit of spritz of that in there. Oh, he's gonna love that. So that concludes this review. Thanks for watching as always. Please thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have anything that you would like to see reviewed on Hard Boiled, please put it down in the comment section below. Hopefully this video proves to you that there is no golf product out there that I will not review on this channel. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you guys next time. Dad, if you're still watching, please know that I am giving you this for Christmas and there is a ton of seaweed packed in there. It smells awful, so enjoy. Yay, Fash!